Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today I'm going to be talking about mobility in teeth during orthodontics. Doesn't matter if you're doing braces or aligners. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that can happen, but let's talk about the why behind it and how to prevent it. And this video, as you know, if you've watched my videos before, um, there are some are more consumer facing, you know, at that level, and some are more doctor facing. This one is going to be more doctor facing. Although if you are um, a consumer and you want to learn about this, you can take this information to your doctor because if your doctor is an orthodontist, your doctor understands this. If your doctor is a general or pediatric dentist or any other type of dentist, they may not fully understand this. So this video might be helpful for them to help to solve the mystery of why a tooth is loose. So first of all, Doctors, you need to make sure your patients are signing their informed consents. There is a section in every informed consent, it doesn't matter if it's clear, correct, Invisalign, a branded informed consent for aligners. Um, hopefully, if you're doing off-label or white-label aligners, you've created your own informed consent. If you haven't, we do have those on sale at our document store at straightsmilesolutions.com. Um, if you're doing braces, you should have your own informed consent. There's plenty that are out there. Again, that's something we also have in our document store. So start there. If you did not have your patient sign your informed consent, stop. Don't listen to this video anymore. Call your TDIC or AOIC, and you know exactly what I'm talking about and get this problem solved because you've got a problem. And I'm just going to leave it there and not tell you anything else. Okay, next, let's find out why. So first, you got to play detective to find out why you have mobility on a tooth. Um, it doesn't just, I mean, occasionally it could be atrogenic and we don't know why it happened, and that's covered in the informed consent. But most of the time, it's caused by something, I'm not gonna say something you did wrong, but something went wrong, and I'm gonna list off all the different things that could have gone wrong. Um, and now, whether or not who's to blame for it, who's liable for it, will depend on how you handle it from here on out, and again, I'm just going to give you clinical recommendations on what it might be. Um, if it's a big problem, you really should contact your risk management company. Um, make sure you have things taken care of. Um, we do help doctors at Straight Smile Solutions develop ideal treatment plans and learn how to do things more correctly, more correctly, correctly. So hopefully these type of things don't happen, but sometimes they do. Okay. And again, it goes back to the whole iatrogenic thing. It can happen. That's why we sign um, informed consent. That's why we monitor patients during treatment and mobility is one of the things you should be monitoring during treatment because it happens and when it happens, you need to think about why it happens and make corrective changes so that it can get better. Okay, so detective time. What things I check. So when a doctor comes to me and says, hey, my patient has a, has a loose tooth during braces, what should I do? First thing I'm gonna say is, okay, this is what I need from you. Um, doesn't matter if it's a braces or a liners patient. I need a full set ortho eight series of photos, um, current of where they are now, you know, the regular ortho photos. And I also need a full set of photos from the start. And hopefully you have these. You should be taking regular progress pictures throughout treatment. I would say definitely every six months to a year is standard of care. Um, and of course, if you're having a problem, you take progress pictures immediately as soon as the problem is, um, arises and document. So I'm gonna ask for that. I'm also going to ask for current x-ray, take a PA of the affected area, as well as the start x-rays, okay? So these are the things I do require from doctors when they come to me with one of these problems. In addition, if the patient is an adult, I'm going to ask for perio uh, probings and charting, um, as well as initial and progress. So you're gonna to have to do probings of the affected area or spot programs. I'm gonna to wanna to see that. So x-rays, photos, initial and progress, initial and progress, okay? So I know it's a lot. If the patient is in aligners, I'm going to want to also see tracking pictures. If you don't know what tracking photos are, you got a lot to learn. So you should definitely read my book would be my suggestion. If you want to read my book, it is probably the best $9.99 if you do Kindle that you've ever spent, otherwise it's 49. You can get it at Amazon in the textbook store. Um, 
if you go to my website, straightsmilesolutions.com, it's prominently right on the banner. Can't miss it. So, and I often give out free copies on my webinars. Um, if you're going to ABA this fall, 2021 in Las Vegas, I'll be giving out some free signed copies there as well. All right. So, and also my YouTube channel has over a thousand videos. My gpwebinar.com channel has about 10 videos that are all really helpful. There's so much information in there and that's all free. So feel free to enjoy it. And that's my quote, free courses. Um, okay, so we've got all the diagnostics. So we're gonna look over the diagnostics for aligner patients. We're also gonna want to see their quote unquote, clean check, clear pilot, treatment plan, the animation. Because the first thing I'm gonna do is see if that animation is, makes sense. I mean, is it a realistic animation or is it way too aggressive? Um, if you have a moderate to severe crowding case, I'm probably going to also recommend a Ceph. If you didn't take one at the beginning, go take one now. This is where you got to take one because we got to see the position of the lower incisors. Don't freak out on Cephs. I have a ton of videos on how to get Cephs and how to obtain Cephs even if you don't have a Ceph arm. If you are... If you don't can't do a Ceph, you can always do a CBCT, just of that area. Mostly I want to look at the incisors, you know, like a lateral position of it and take a slice of that. Uh, you may not be able to get the numbers that way unless you have the whole Ceph as for reference. Um, but there's a lot of stuff we can see just from that slice, just with my trained eyeballs and stuff like that. But you might be able to send it to, I usually use CephX, but a lot of uh, ortho labs, I have videos on this too. So anything that I'm mentioning that you don't know, you can email us at info at straightsmilesolutions.com or message us at straightsmilesolutions.com. Say, hey, can I get your Seth videos? We'll send them to you. No problem. Free. Just let us know what you need. Or you mentioned something about how to get Seths if you don't have a Seth machine. Just message us and we'll send it to you because I know where all my content is and I can get it for you in like five seconds. It's really easy. I don't mind at all. Just message me and I'll send it to you. You need that Seth. If you're getting mobility, you need a Seth. That would be considered standard of care. If you didn't take one at the beginning, it's okay, fine, take one now. And let's that's gonna help solve the puzzle piece as to what is wrong. So we're gonna take all that data and we're gonna sit down together and we're gonna find out what the problem is. Was it the treatment plan? Was the treatment plan too aggressive? It's top three reasons, it's often the treatment plan if it is a aligner case. I look at these treatment plans. I'm like, that's way too aggressive. Of course it's going to get loose because it's too fast. It doesn't have time to stabilize. The osteoclasts and osteoplasts don't have time to rest. Listen, I love Invisalign and Clear Correct. There's a lot of, in a lot of aligner companies, but people don't understand when you, it, it's basic ortho. Moving teeth with slow and low and gradual forces is healthier for the teeth and bone. You're going to have less side effects, less discomfort, less mobility, better outcomes and actually it's going to get done quicker than it would if you moved it fast yes overhead might be a little more expensive but not if you're doing invisalign comprehensive um, or clear correct unlimited because it doesn't cost you anymore to do it slow enough you just have to ask for it if you don't ask for it you don't get it so that is one of the top three reasons that you get that too aggressive of a treatment plan real easy take your records figure out what happened if that's what it is we're just going to modify it and we are going to slow down the movement so things have time to stabilize. Um, number two reason might be, again, this is where the SEP comes in. Did you try to invade the biologic width? That's ortho terms for did you, you know, if, if, if you take a SEP, you can look and get your, uh, your angle of the incisors to either the maxilla or the mandible. And that tells you, is it safe? for you to flare those teeth forward anymore. Remember, Invisalign and ClearCorrect, one of the main ways they eliminate crowding, we've talked about how to deal with crowding, is expansion and proclination. Nothing wrong with that if you've got a healthy patient with a lot of bone, but lots of things wrong with that if you don't have a healthy patient with lots of bone. And Invisalign and ClearCorrect technicians have no idea because they don't have your CEPH and they don't have your perio charting and they don't have your CBCT and they don't have all the data. They're just doing what you tell them to do. So they very well might invade the biologic width with their treatment plan. And you as the doctor are supposed to tell them, no, don't do that, or yes, okay to do that. If you don't tell them, you might have a treatment plan that's causing loose teeth. Again, who's responsible? Ultimately, if this comes to the dental board or if this comes to a complaint with the insurance company, who's responsible? You are the doctor. You are the doctor. 
you're responsible, you're the liable one because you didn't make a good treatment plan. You cannot rely on these treatment planners at these companies to tell you what to do. That is the biggest mistake you can do. You will get sued and you rightfully, honestly should get sued for making bad clinical decisions, for jumping into specialty work without knowing what you're doing. I'm sorry, but there's a reason why orthodontists go to residency for three more years. I'm not saying we don't make mistakes because we do, but we don't make these kind of mistakes on a regular basis. And these are like top three mistakes that general dentists make every single day. So I, I, I know some of you are gonna get freaked out listening to this, but it's really, really easy to go through your treatment plans, to go through all your cases and say, have someone who's an expert, whether it's myself, whether it's one of many other orthodontists that do this for a living, um, treatment planning services. I mean, there's ones I recommend and I have a lot of competitors who I think are awesome. You know, there's more, there's over 250,000 primary care dentists just in North America alone, you know, and most of them are doing ortho. I'm not concerned about a little competition because I think you guys need us. You know, and if we can prevent patients from having loose teeth, it's worth it, right? I will be glad to impart some of my wisdom on you. Okay, so we talked about bad treatment plans. We talked about aggressive treatment plans, unpredictable treatment plans. What else could it be? Well, I do have another video that talks about, yeah, invading the biologic width. We talked about that, pushing things too far forward. Let's talk about patients with existing periodontal disease, you know, um, low crown to root ratio, et cetera. If your patient has periodontal disease to begin with, well, don't push the teeth forward. And one of the biggest mistakes you can make is round tripping. I don't round trip in periodontal patients. Nope. So you need to learn, and you're gonna most likely in periodontal patients wanna incorporate IPR into your treatment plan, a lot of it, you know, and or lower incisor extraction would be another option. Since usually the teeth they get most loose are the front teeth, right? So you need to really think about this and do a regular if you have a fair amount of of crown to root ratio attachment loss should you even be doing ortho in this patient i always recommend in this case that you get the perio managed first and if it seems kind of sketchy the amount of attachment loss it's already lost you really should send that patient to a periodontist to start i realize that you'd like to manage your own perio and keep that in house but the liability is also on you there are periodontists for a reason they are out there to make sure bone and tissue stays healthy, and they would be more than glad to manage your patient during that period of orthodontic treatment. Let them clear the patient to start. Let them management. The liability is now off you if they're managing it, you know? And they can tell you to go, stop, slow down, whatever they need to do, and you can take all the pressure off you. I think it's the smartest thing to do. Just like I recommend when there's root resorption to work with the endodontist. The specialists are there for a reason. Don't always keep everything in house because you're also keeping all the liability in house if and when things occur, right? Okay, next. So those are the top three that we talked about just existing periodontal, not incorporating enough IPR, not taking the right diagnostic records, not doing the most right progress records, um, aggressive treatment plans, too fast treatment plans. Um, yeah, again, invading the biologic with some things like that. So what to do often involves a change in treatment plan, might add more IPR, take additional diagnostic records, make modifications. Um, you also need to quantify the amount of mobility. Now remember, you're taking a tooth, which is a living structure, and you're dragging it through bone, which is, you know, it could be more dense in some patients, less dense in other patients. It's also a living structure that needs to remodel. Of course, it's gonna get a little bit loose. One millimeter, you remember, you have to go back to your dental school, let's quantify mobility. Um, one low mobility, fine. One plus, probably also fine. Two, not fine. Two plus, not fine. Depressible, not fine. So. You need to keep an eye on areas of and sites that are mobile. You need to slow down your treatment plan, slow down your mechanics. Um, sometimes you're gonna have to stop treatment if there's really no if any other way around it, you know, without making it worse. I mean, if you can't find anything to help it or to change it, you might need to stop treatment. We call that discontinuing. And that is also built into, again, hopefully you had your informed consent signed. That's built in there. It says in their language that sometimes we have to stop treatment early. Sometimes we don't finish the treatment. This is where you need to go back to your contract. And if you didn't watch my lecture last week, 
that I did with Miss Bonzi Popat, who is an expert at contracts and um, management and insurance for ortho. You should definitely watch it because there was a lot of great pearls in there about contracts. And she even has templates for contracts that she'll be glad to give to anyone who is one of her clients. And you can book a session from my website. If you go to my website and go to classes, look for the classes by Bonzi Popat. Very reasonable prices too, by the way, for the amount of money it's going to save you. And you want to make sure that you have that built into your ortho contract. And I do have contracts by the way, in my store, if you want to go there, but it doesn't necessarily have all this stuff built into it. It's a real vanilla contract. So I would recommend working with Bonsi on your contract because she can build things like this into your contract and give you suggestions on the verbiage. But the main thing is that you want to have an out. So if, if we got mobility of two plus on number 24 and we've already optimized the treatment plan and then, and we've, there's no other way to do this. It's, you have to do no harm first and you got to talk to the patient and say i'm sorry i know you want to keep going and making this straight but in doing so our likelihood of this tooth falling out and not surviving is high and an implant is a lot more expensive than leaving it slightly crooked so i'm just going to take this tooth out of occlusion and we're going to finish up the top teeth and then be done and leave the bottom teeth a little bit crooked it happens yes sometimes you might have to give a partial refund this should all be built into your contract if you need to discontinue early on how that looks like. And if you don't have it built into your contract, you need to meet with Bonzi and figure out how to do this because you're gonna be so much happier if you have this all built into your contract. So when these one-offs happen, you are protected and you don't have to give a full refund and you don't have to worry about complaints because you're completely covered. Again, contact your risk management company for your ortho tips because these things happen. So yeah, I mean, pretty much it. I mean, just change the treatment plan, slow down the movements and or discontinue. At the end of treatment, if you have a tooth, usually I love the idea with aligners of doing passive aligners at the end just to kind of stabilize things. Um, but you can also consider something like custom bonded retention. You know, you can watch all my videos on bonded retainers. Again, you can't just slap these on in your office. You should have these custom made by a lab because when they're done improperly, it's actually worse than having no retention because all kind of wacky things happen. Not to mention, you know, uh, breakage, decay, calculus, periodontal disease, etc. if they're not managed. And remember, if you bond it, you married it. So if you bond a bonded retainer, you're married to that patient for life and you need to figure out how it's gonna work with warranties, breakage, monitoring. You can build that all, all into the agreement and how it works. And again, Bonsi Pofad is a great reference for how to deal with this kind of stuff. And that is also in our video, which is archived. If you go to my gpwebinar.com or if you go to, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, it's prominent. It's right there on the homepage. So hopefully this was helpful in terms of management um, and how to avoid uh, mobile teeth. Thank you so much. Any questions, please go to streetsmilesolutions.com.